As you guys can see, I got the uh, tuning condenser cleaned up. Looks uh, really sharp now and it's uh, free as a bird. I used the uh, Labels 206 and the uh, Labels 202 on the uh, bearings and the shaft. I've already checked my capacitance, everything looks good. It's within a, a few picofarads of uh, where I uh, found the uh, tuning condenser, including getting the uh, mica cleaned and back in. I'm going to just do a quick check now, just to make certain through the rotation that uh, I don't have any of the plates shorted between the rotor and the stator. So hopefully the meter won't beep at us while I uh, rotate through the uh, rotation. Okay, that section looks good. And this section looks good as well, just to make sure my meter is actually working. So there we have it. The uh, tuning condenser is uh, ready to be uh, put back in. You can see I've got all the uh, solder locations uh, cleaned up as well. I'll put this away somewhere along with the uh, dial pointers and the uh, grommets. And uh, we'll place it back in the chassis uh, down the road. Another product that I like to use on the dial scale or the artwork is the uh, Renaissance Micro Crystalline Polish. It does a, a really nice job of uh, bringing out the uh, patina. really does uh, well to clean these up. Again, I'm going to uh, test it down here on the edge just to uh, make certain that uh, I don't do any damage or removal of any of the uh, existing inks. So let me do that real fast, and then I'll go ahead and apply it to the entire dial cover and uh, wipe it back off. This thing should look a lot better. I think we're good. I don't see anything coming off there, but uh, just some dirt. Let me go ahead and apply it in some small sections and uh, just work my way around the uh, perimeter of the dial. You may be able to see the difference that made. Let me see if I can hold it in the light at an angle. Yeah, I think you can see the uh, demarcation point. Tried to go from uh, about 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock. Let me just go ahead and continue to uh, work my way around. I'll bring you guys back and uh, we'll take a look at it. Just continuing to use the uh, clean cloth now, working my way around the uh, dial scale. Just overlapping the uh, previous areas that I completed. I think that turned out pretty well. You guys uh, look for the uh, link in the uh, first video that I did as well as this video for the uh, URL to the Google Drive if you want to uh, download the artwork. I'll um, have it posted for you. For those that watched a couple videos back in the series, you saw where the uh, wire was frayed on the high voltage side. It appears the conductor itself is fine. It's just the uh, outside insulation. I'm going to place some uh, heat shrink over the small section after I get the uh, transformer back in the uh, housing itself. And then put a, a small piece of uh, silicone on uh, top of that as well. I got everything threaded through. And I think I'm good. 
I'm going to double check the uh, conductors extremely close when I get this thing back together. There we have it. Looking back at some of my previous documentation, the uh, head of the screws go in from this orientation. And let me slip on this piece of silicone over the uh, heat shrink for a little double protection. I think we're good. Let me go back and go ahead and do some DC measurements on the windings. I won't bore you guys with that. If I find any uh, crosstalk between the uh, windings themselves and or the uh, housing, I'll uh, provide an update. One more spot, I don't think it's a problem, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and slip a piece of uh, heat shrink over this area right here on the uh, center tap winding. That's the problem with these old transformer. The leads just get uh, dry rotted after a while. Just wrapping up on the DC resistance checks, everything looks fine. I don't see any issues. I'll check the uh, wattage of the uh, power transformer as well unloaded. That's uh, also an indication when you bring it under full load that there's an issue. I'll do that in an upcoming video. Let me uh, set the uh, power transformer off to the side and it's ready to uh, be reinstalled when that time comes. So I had a question about the uh, citric acid mixture. We'll measure the uh, pH of some of the uh, tap water at my house, but uh, typically my mixture would be somewhere around um, two to two and a quarter teaspoons per quart, which would be four cups. So around uh, one teaspoon for two cups is usually what I mix. And uh, you can look at the uh, pH here of the tap water. And you can see we're right at, uh, what, six, seven, five to almost seven. Let me get the citric acid and uh, let's throw a teaspoon in here, measure that, and uh, just see what the acidic level is. So my little scoop, you can see, is about 10 cc's. That's so about two teaspoons. We'll fill it up about halfway. I think that's about half. It'll be pretty close. Let me give that a good stir. I like to use uh, warm tap water. In uh, this case, I uh, failed to do so, so it's just room temperature. Let's see what we've got now. Whoops. And you can see the uh, level is about uh, one on the uh, pH scale, or just north of that. Now, one thing I found, of course, when you put the uh, metal, whatever you're de-resting in, it will become more alkaline and it fades over time. So that's the starting point with uh, two cups of water, about five cc's or one teaspoon of citric acid. Hope that was helpful. And not to waste the uh, product. Let me go ahead and do some de-rusting on the uh, remaining hardware for the uh, tuning condenser. And the pH a couple hours later. And you can see it's moving back toward more neutral 
or more alkaline. Thanks for watching, folks.